Hi, I'm John, and this is Quid Pro Stereo. Recently, I found two old Dell 486 laptops at a yard sale for $5 for the pair, as is. Now, regardless of condition, I'd call that a score. Once I got them home, I gave them a try, and surprisingly, they both booted up. But there was a problem. Both laptops had a BIOS password that couldn't be bypassed. I tried everything, disconnecting the CMOS battery, updating the BIOS, none of it worked. I was about to give up on them when I found a website that detailed a possible fix. Now I'll put a link to that in the description. Now I don't know if they're the originators of this fix, but this is where I came across it, and spoiler alert, it works. Now the fix involves resetting the chip where the password is stored. The chip that was used here was used on a fair amount of laptops for that time, so this fix will apply to multiple models. Here's a partial list from that website. Now the gist of the fix is you have to get to the EEPROM chip that holds the password and short two pins while the machine's booting up. It's dicey, sometimes you need three hands, but it does work. And trust me, if I can do it, you can do it. On some laptops, this chip may be a little easier to get to than it is on this one, but in my case, it was on the underside of the motherboard and kind of a pain to get to. The laptop I'm working with is a Dell Latitude XP 4100T, so 100 MHz 486. Up next, I'm gonna show you how to get to the chip on this particular model. If you have a different machine and you don't care how mine is disassembled, you can skip straight to the fix at this time code. Now, on to the disassembly. Okay, so the first step of our disassembly is going to be taking out the drives. Right here, you just pull this little tab. And you can pull the hard drive out. Uh, the battery, just the same. Pull this panel down. And you can pull the battery out. All right, um, I'm gonna go ahead and take off the RAM door. I don't really think I need to, but I'll do it anyway. It's kind of kind of a pain. You have to pry up this edge and push it the back side. There we go. Now, um, first step is screws. Now, just as an aside, I'm going to share what I do when I'm taking apart laptops or anything that's got a bunch of screws. I make myself a little map. Now, I've already taken this one apart and uh, fixed it, but I'm going to walk you through the steps I did. But anytime I'm faced with a, um, a panel or a side of an object, I make myself a little drawing. I number every screw that comes off. I lay it down and I mark the length. And if I need to, I make make a description of you know, what kind of screw it is. Um, that way, if I'm coming back to this project a day or two or a week later, I'm not mixing the screws up and putting them in the wrong place. Um, you can really damage something pretty badly on a laptop as tight as these things get if you put you know, the correct thread of screw in a hole that's meant for a shorter or longer screw. Um, you can mess something up. So um, that's what I do, just, just a little tip. Go along. But the first thing here is get these screws here. There are three of them. And as you can see, I've marked the length on my little mat legend here. And uh, always keep, keep a little tub nearby because you don't want those rolling off into the floor. Um, next step is going to be removing this top panel guy right here. Now this one, um, again, already taken it apart. So I've busted, there's some clips here on the front and I already busted one of them. So be careful. But the, it's this piece, these little thin side pieces here, and this is all one piece. And it kind of needs to pull back. There's some catches at the back over here behind the keyboard. And there's some clips here in the front. If you try to pull it straight off, you're going to break those little Tab. So what you should do is kind of tip it up. You can kind of work a screwdriver up under there, pry it forward, and that'll get it off those clips. And it should just basically pull forward. You might have to wiggle it a little bit because again, there's some catches here in the back that need to release. Just don't wiggle it too much and break it. Board came with it. Now, you know, there is a ribbon cable attached to this trackball. 
I need to separate that. Just be careful with it. Make sure the tab is all the way out before you pull. Alright, and now that piece is free. Here's what we've got. There's the keyboard. It has two ribbon cable connectors down here. The front one's pretty easy to get to. The one at the back is kind of a pain, especially getting it back on. But it's not terrible. Alright, now keyboard's out of the way. This is your system uh, battery. It's the MOS battery. Easy enough to take out. Um, floppy drive. Um, it's held in by a screw. While we're working on that, we might as well get all the screws out of the motherboard. One there. And I find that sometimes you know, screws, I've got magnetic screwdrivers, but sometimes they just, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. It doesn't want to quite catch it. Um, let me try my other one. Here. Another one. Might be able to grab it. No, it's not grabbing it. Um, one mistake I've made before is got four or five screws here. Don't loosen them all at once. Loosen them one at a time so that if you do have to dump, dump it over to get that one out. You're only going to have one falling out at once and not five because you will inevitably lose one in the carpet somewhere and you will never find it. Um, there's one there. One way back here in the corner is a little hole cut out right here. There's another one right here. Where'd it go? See, I already lost one. There it is. Oof, they like to run away. And there's another one hiding right back here in the corner. I didn't see that. Now be aware, I didn't realize this until I really started getting it, getting into it, is that the motherboard of this thing I thought was just right here. It actually extends all the way back here, all the ports. That's not a daughter board, that is all one piece. So be careful when you're pulling this out. You definitely wouldn't want to break your motherboard in half. Um, floppy drive, just take that, pull that ribbon cable. It's got a little connector for the PC speaker. Let's just see. Pull this guy out. Set him aside. Okay. Now while we're back here, these two little trim pieces have got to come off for the uh, screen to come loose. We're going to have to get the screen out. At least I did. You may be able to fish this motherboard out without doing it, but I was not. Again, um, you got to worry about clips. There's two clips on uh, each of these, about in this location, and here, here, and here. On the front side of that, there's just little catches. Um, they just go up under a frame of the laptop. So what you got to do, kind of pry this up and get a small precision screwdriver. Just kind of pry it up. These are easy to break, by the way. While we're here, these little legs have to come off so you can get the, the uh, monitor off. All you have to do is just get this little cover off. Oh my goodness, man. Little cover off. Might have to pry on both sides a little bit. Get them backwards like I did when I already assembled this because that little beveled edge should be towards the front of the machine so you have something to grab when you're twisting it around with the little stands that make the keyboard sit up. All right. All right, now we're ready to start. 
start pulling things apart. Carefully. Now I got two screws here that are holding your display cable in place. Okay, now just gently pull that connector up. There we go. Now this should just under should just pull straight up. There is a little catch here in the middle that likes to hang. I don't know if there likes to hang. So, anyway, that's out of the way now. Now we're down to just the motherboard. Just the bottom of the case, I guess. Gotta get the motherboard out. There's little clips at the front of the case that are holding the motherboard in place. Um, just kind of flex the case out a little bit. Also, go ahead and take your these little doors off before they get broken. Um, actually, that one stays in place. The other one doesn't. All right, there's your wiggle, and now you got it. It's out, free from the case. I'll just take this little shield out of the way. There we go. That's our motherboard. Now, what we came to see. Actually, it's on the bottom. That's the reason why we had to disassemble this so far. It's a little, I believe it's an EEPROM chip. It is right here. If I can zoom in far, close enough so you can see it. It is an X24C02 chip. Now, what you're going to have to do is short pins 3 and 6 of the paperclip while you're powering it on. That is, sounds kind of dicey, and it, it, it kind of is. You can shock yourself, you can destroy the machine, but in this case, it was the last ditch. There was nothing left I could do. Again, this method is applicable to a lot of Dell laptops. Just look for that 24C02 chip. Um, if you're not sure, if it's not conveniently labeled on the motherboard which pins are which, um, Pin one is always going to have the little, the, there's going to be a little divot on the chip. I don't know if you can see it here, a little circle. That indicates pin one. And you just keep counting down, count in a counterclockwise rotation. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's an eight pin chip. So, we got to cross those two. And I'll show you how I set that up here in a minute. Okay, here's the setup I used to do this. And you're either going to be need to be have very steady hands or have a third set of hands or a third hand. <laughs> um, the way I set it up is you need to you need to have access to this. This is your, uh, your power switch. You're gonna need to be able to turn it on. Um, you need to this is your power port. You're obviously gonna need to have that um, accessible and going to need to be able to get down here to this chip and across these two pins. Um, what I did is, because I did not trust myself to be able to hold onto those pins and reach over here and hit the power switch without knocking myself loose on these pins, um, what I did is I held them there and I just kept all my concentration on that, and had my son come over, flick the power switch. Just held it for a few seconds. Um, I could tell the machine was booting. I could see uh, text starting to come up on the screen. Um, I released the jumper. He hit the button, turned it off, um, plugged it back, plugged a few peripherals back in, and it worked fine. So. We're gonna go through a dry run of that. I'm not obviously not going to do it again because this machine is fixed. Um, but I will show you how we did it. So this is what I did. I kind of rested my finger, my pinky, on top of these chips just to help steady my hand a little bit. But you're gonna be crossing these two pins and you wanna uh, get your paper clip configured just about right. You don't want it springing either too close or too, out, or too far out. If you let it go, you want it 
pretty much its rest state to be. We're just gonna be right on those pins, so just in case the finger slips, it's not gonna, you know, spring off and hit something that it shouldn't and mess everything up. So, so I'll just rest my pinky there. Cross the two pins. All right, turn it on. Okay, and I'm just holding it there for a few seconds. While it goes through its initial boot up, I started seeing stuff on the screen. So I release it, hit the power switch, hit the power switch, and then we're done. Then comes the fun part, you get to partially reassemble it, test it, see if it worked. Um, I ended up uh, just connecting the keyboard, the trackball. The trackball will give you a keyboard error if it's not connected, and uh, floppy drive. And that was enough. It got far enough into the boot up process, and it tried to access the floppy, so I knew it was working. So and I got back to reassembling it. Um, but that is how you repair that. Um, it's my understanding, like I said, this method will work on multiple models of Dell laptop. You just have to adapt the method for. That particular model well anyway i hope that helped if you appreciate the help um, please give my channel a thumbs up um, it would really help and consider subscribing if you like <laughs>